four zero. Stumpers, what's going on? We are here for an episode of Foot Stuff. It is Friday, March third. I don't know why I looked in my bedroom as if I have a calendar hanging up. Uh, we're here for an episode of Foot Stuff, as I said, and Tiago is stuck working. So, background to this: we were supposed to record yesterday. Something came up for me. Carried on into today. In today. Perry's the only one with any commitment on this podcast. Uh, thank you very much, Perry, for jumping on. I feel like you have the week off, but still awesome to have you. How are you? Good, man. Good. How are you? I'm okay. Not as good as you, but uh, we'll get into that. Ricardo is currently on vacation, so he may jump on at some point and sort of act like a terrorist, and Tiago is stuck working. So in the end, this is the Perry episode anyway. It is uh, feels like a culmination. It's been how many years, Perry? uh six seven 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 years man seven years seven Seven years since man you won a title and over the weekend they won the efl cup right efl also known as carabao it's the carabao cup but more so like it's just pronounced it's just more so known as the league cup it's just a league cup. cup yeah yeah not the league title just the league cup League Cup. Uh, so Man United took care of business against Newcastle. It's gonna be a little bit of a freestyle episode. Uh, nothing really stood out to me majorly in the EPL or any leagues across the board, other than obviously the trophy as we've referenced and etc. Tell me about the final. How did the boys look? I caught, I'm gonna say, the, the entire second half and maybe like a portion of the first half. I saw you guys sort of chatting about Rashford. Scoring a goal. I think Casemiro had a big one. How did the how did the match look? Perry? How did the boys look? Um, for me, it was just fucking amazing. Obviously, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. um, at at first, you know, I I kind of, I was, I kind of didn't understand why we were just letting Newcastle have the ball a lot. Um, but then I started to think about what I've been saying like in the past recent weeks is that Newcastle, they're toothless on offense right you can give them the ball all you want and they won't even score a single goal and you know once that was happening uh, throughout the game that's when I started to uh, remember what I was saying I was like okay I see what the manager is doing here like let them have the ball let them have the ball because they're not going to do anything the only thing that they um that they did that was kind of like uh worrying was um like within the first, you know, five to ten minutes, uh, Saint Alan Maxim, oh no, Alan, what, what's his name? Al- Saint Maximin. Maximin? Yeah, Saint Maximin or whatever his name is. Mm-hmm. Like he skinned the low, right? Like he just tore him apart for like the first uh t- ten minutes, I would say. And then once he once the low got his yellow, I felt like the low was really like he he was good after that. But that was their only threat throughout the whole game, especially in that first half. And then once we ended up getting the the two goals from Casemiro and uh, Rashford, he switched it up and put Aaron Wamasaka on. And that just nullified um, St. Maximin, like, throughout the rest of the game. Their manager ended up taking him off, putting on other guys on that really weren't going to do anything in in the first place. Like, our team as a whole was really good defensively. Um, we were good offensively. We probably should have scored maybe two more goals uh, within the final. Um, I'm not going to mention that uh, player. Right yeah, right at the end, he he yeah, has. Uh, he, had two, he had two chances, which really, yeah, which really frustrates me because he had two chances. And, you know, normally I feel like he, he would have put at least one of them away. He, he would have put at least one of them away or at least made the right decision in terms of passing it to Sancho uh, when it was like the final two on one. But you know what? That would just be me uh, nitpicking, uh, to to be honest with you. Like the, the whole game was just fucking amazing. Like to finally win a trophy after so long. Like I, I'm not gonna complain about it. I, I I'm just I'm just not gonna complain about. It. I felt like the manager had his tactics right, like ten out of ten, throughout that game itself. Like what he told his guys to do in terms of letting them have the ball, knowing that they're not gonna do anything. To um the way how he had Casemiro just come in, you know, shadow like 
his uh, fullbacks whenever um, they would have a one-on-one out on the flanks. Casemiro was just, he came over immediately. They had nothing. Um, the whole game, they had nothing. It, it, it was great. It was great. I, honestly, I can't complain. They were, th- that is the Newcastle knock, is they are a little bit toothless. I feel like we talked about it last episode too, and hence why I did have a 2 nothing result there. And no humble brag, I just, I could not see a route to where Newcastle truly even threatens Manu. And I know Manu's, people will say their strength is Rashford, who's on the uh, the purple batch, which is not real. It's just a <laughs> shtick I have. They could say the front four. Their back four is ridiculous. And whether it's Delo or Juan Bissaka, whoever it is, that might be their weakness. But Shaw, Varane, and Lissandro are just so solid. And for a team that does not create enough opportunities, it would take a mistake in the box to concede a penalty, I thought, and or something of magic. And I didn't realize that, say, Maxim was abusing Delo the way you had sort of said in the chat and then re-watching a little bit of it. I, I feel like also Delo played backwards. He played more cons- like more safe and smart with the yellow than yeah. when he got his yellow. It's, it was backwards. And I was just like, yeah. bit bizarre, bit, bit of a, a bizarre player. I'm not sure how he fits on Man U going forward, like next window, et cetera. He might be a little bit more dispensable for them. Um, yeah. But you so know what? Hmm? Oh, sorry to cut you off. But you know oh. what? The thing about Delo is that, you know, early in the season, he did really well. He was doing well early in the season. And then I think maybe, you know, obviously the World Cup. And then he had that hamstring injury uh, in the World Cup that when he when he came back, he still had the hamstring injury. And then Juan Basaka was, um, was uh, playing in his position for about a month straight, a month and a half before Delo actually came back. And maybe that has taken a toll on him currently. Right. Uh, but the thing is with the low right now, what he's not showing are his offensive like abilities. That's what he's not showing right now. You know what I mean? And sure. it even looks like sometimes like Wamasaka is better offensively than the low, which is crazy to say. Right. It, yeah, it's not. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's what he's showing currently. And for me right now, like I like Delo, I like Delo a lot, but what's working for us right now is having Wamba Saka play, and uh, especially in the big game. So like this Sunday, I hope he plays right going up against um, sure. cool. Gakpo or Nunes, wh- whichever of the two. Like I hope Wamba Saka plays because he's also, which is the weirdest thing ever, he's kind of press resistant, and <laughs> when you see a guy as weird and awkward. On the ball as Aaron Wamasaka, you never would think that this guy's kind of press resistant. Like, you know, it, like he has the ability to uh, escape tackles and shit whenever um, guys uh, are, are coming at him, which is the craziest thing. The ball never looks comfortable on his foot. That's my, no. my truth. It never looks very comfortable. So it's, it's interesting you say that because I think I would think complete opposite, right? I would think. Yeah. A hundred percent, right? That's what everybody would say. Everybody would say, like, yo, th- it's the complete opposite. Like, it's the low who is press resistant, who's great on the ball and everything. But what Wambasaka has shown since he's come into um in, into the team more often, like he, he's shown a lot, he's improved a lot, and everything that he's getting currently right now, he deserves it, in my opinion. Fair. I uh I think the one knock that people are throwing at Man U and it's, it's a fair one, but it's hard when a team's going for their own version of a quad. Uh, they didn't, their, their route to the final, you don't choose your route. You play your route, right? That's, that's sort of the, how the saying goes. I can't say they were overly tested. So, and it, it would be irresponsible if I did not mention this, it, it is an irresponsible fact. They yeah. played Newcastle, who is a EPL team. They played yeah. Nottingham EPL team. Charlton, who, whatever, they could be League One, I'm not sure, championship, but they had actually beaten Brighton to get there, who was a top five team. Yeah. Brighton, who beat Arsenal, right? So that's yeah. that's the thing with people choosing the path conversation, and I'm not siding with Man U fans. I think they are a little bit poisonous. Uh, they're annoying, but that is a fact, is the road is only as easy as other teams who slip and fall. 
So exactly. I, I and like really. and mm-hmm. like the thing is is that you know a lot of um opposing, you know, top six teams fans are crying and complaining about the route that we've gone. Like I'm not saying you because you know obviously Everton's not top six, but oh, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> but I'm just saying like you know they're complaining a lot about uh, uh the path that we we've taken to get to the final and win it but i haven't heard the same for when city was doing it like four or five years out of five or six like they were always getting the easy um they were always getting the easy draws always but Mm -hmm. i've never like i didn't hear much from other teams crying and complaining and but at the same time when i look at the complaints that people are having about united right now and 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 us uh, winning the trophy and people crying and complaining that we are celebrating the trophy too much. It's that it's showing that we're on the right path. We're on the path to going to getting back to where we used to be, where we were the most hated team, especially in England, because all we did was win. And I'm hoping that we get to that point again uh, w- with our manager and and the players that he has and the mentality that he's, he, that he's instilled to a lot of these other players. Uh, minus, you know, obviously Casemiro and Varane, because they're already winners, right? Like, I feel like we're going to get to that point soon. It's, it's listen, it, as much as it's, you know, City's path, this path, you only garner hate when you start to go in the right direction. And then yeah. if if you're not garnering hate, you're, gar- you're garnering like... Uh, what Fake is the love. Problem? Like, they're making fun of you, right? So it, yeah. they... They hate you if you're good, and they make fun of you if you're poor. So no one's making fun of Man U's path, right? They're just criticizing it because it's a trophy. And that, that's everybody's fear, right? Everyone's fear is United come up from the fucking grave, and they start finding trophies. And listen, it's it's a real thing. It's definitely – I feel it. I feel it on social media. I definitely do. I definitely see it. And it's not only because the shit I follow, just in general. They're getting, they're getting their flowers right now. And I think just like any – it's sort of a program, any program that's building itself up. It's not step one. That's important. It's step three and four. So now it's how you build off this. Right. And yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely, it's promising. I'm sure you're super excited as a United fan. Um, the, what do you give? So zero is impossible. A hundred is like locked stock and barrel. Mm-hmm. How many trophies do you expect? Like, what's the percent? And then what's the percentage of that? So right now you have a quarter of it done, right? You have a quarter of your quad. Yeah, uh, we're we're definitely not getting the quad. Uh, that's for sure. We're not even in the title race right Yo, now. Yo, let's let's be real though. Let's let's spice yeah. this up a bit. Yeah, we're I not. Fucking, in the title I race. fucking hate United, but if they win, listen to me. If they win the Prem, the FA, the EFL, and the Europa, I am okay saying they want a quad. Is it the best quad possible? No, but it's a quad. It's but it's the quad. It's yeah. the quad. It's, it's four trophies, right? It's but not. but let's let's already you know take us out of the Premier League one, right? We're not in the title race right now. <laughs> it's, shut that's, the fuck that's, up, yo! Listen, no, no, no. Such but, a bitch. Shut up. No, 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 let's be honest. Let's be honest, Jay. It's just Arsenal and City right now, right? It's just Arsenal and City. Z, such, the- when you when you turn into Rick is when you lose my my attention span. So I know if I fucking had a lie detector test plugged into you, you're you're sniffing, you're sniffing around an EPL. You're you're not you're not in the top no, two no, favorites. No, okay but- no, no, no. That's okay to say. Like mm-hmm. we're we're like you know we're like the sleeping dog. Right. Like we're like right now we're just chilling like, you know, we're we're not too fussed about anything. We got other things to take care of. But hey, the moment there's a slip up, the moment there's a slip up, I can expect us to be there. You know what I mean? Sure. But but we're not in a title race like for us. We're not in the title race currently, especially being 11 points behind Arsenal. We're 11 points behind Arsenal. Uh, six behind the city, right? Um, those who are in the title race right now, I feel like, you know, obviously, you know, the stupid cliches, one game at a time and all that shit. Sure. It actually counts for this right now. Like if we beat Liverpool on the weekend, if we beat Liverpool on the weekend. Okay. 
there there most likely will be a little bit of whispers. There right? are, are. You're you're so full of shit. There's not from you, but no, from no, a lot real, of other no, whispers. No, I'm saying real, real oh. uh, whispers, like not the ones where people want to force us into the 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 title talk, right? I'm not saying that's you. Uh, I'm just mm-hmm. saying like a lot of other external factors like to force us into the title talk. But I'm just saying if we beat Liverpool, because the psychological edge that comes with that, even with them being shit, right? Oh, yeah. It's still huge. It's still huge because we, in, in, in a matter of what, 10 days to two weeks, we can say that we've beaten Barcelona, Newcastle, and Liverpool. Well, we'll put West Ham in there too, but West Ham shit. But, Whatever. and Liverpool. You know what I'm saying? Like within that span, that is huge for these players. That is huge. Like you have a title in, in that and you beat uh, the best team in Spain and you beat your number one rivals. So like, what's your, so what is your true expectation? And don't give me the, we want to win every game that's in front of us. We expect to win everything or the four trophies. So you have one down, you have FA, which you just squeezed by the no, hangover the show, right? Yeah. Oh, which one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 against West Ham, right? Yeah, there was, yeah, there was yeah, a yeah. true hangover. But you know what, though? That that was a hangover. Like, these guys were playing like they were still fucking drunk. Yeah, for but sure. But one change just flipped the game on its head. And that was fucking bringing on Casemiro. So tell me. So wait. So tell me. FA Cup? What's the, mm-hmm. what's the likelihood you guys win FA Cup? Um, 50%. Wow. Okay. You uh, know, only because of City. City's there. So, like, the two teams, one of the two teams are winning it. City or us. What, how many teams are remaining in FA? Uh, we're going into the quarterfinals now. So, final eight. Okay. Yeah. So, 50%. Impressive. EPL? Uh, 0%. Listen, okay. we're not in it. We're not in it. We're not winning that. Europa? Uh, Europa. So that one's a big one in terms of the teams that are left, right? Because I'm not going to, you know, um, I'm not going to hate on like a Juve who by the time it comes to the final, if we have to face Juve and they're completely healthy, true, true. that's going to be nuts, right? Arsenal's also in it, even though they're fucking shit, but yeah, Arsenal's in it. Um, Roma, you can never count out a Jose Mourinho team. You I can never count it. Them, I totally right? Are you? Sure? They're, yeah, they're in it. They're in it. I yeah, totally they're, forgot. They're it. You, you know, you know what's one funny thing that I seen like <laughs> just a couple of days ago. Jose Mourinho has the most reds than than <laughs> any player than yeah. any player in Italy, bro. In yeah. Italy, like in the Italian league in Syria, <laughs> yeah. he has the most reds, and he's a fucking manager. So you know what's funny is I I'm in a group chat with some uh, the, the chat's called degenerates but just gamblers guys that like pick games to game and so I was following Roma played earlier this week uh, they played Kremlin Zone Kremlinose they're like the last place team in, in Syria and Kremlinose actually beat him two one Mourinho got a red right after halftime and yeah. one of the guys in the chat because I actually took Kremlinose to win one of the guys in the chat was like yeah you got lucky with that red playing a man down. No, it's the fucking manager. I'm Portuguese. Manager. Like, I'm, not, I'm not that fucking stupid. Like, yeah, I understand. I don't know soccer like the rest of, you know, most of the people I talk to act like they know. But Jose Mourinho is a fucking manager. To me, one of my favorite managers. And him leading Italy with Reds does not shock me. Does not. <laughs> it doesn't shock me. He's just a psychopath. Yeah. I literally went like this when you said it. I was like, yeah, yeah it's fucking nuts. Like. I so your know. your Europa percentage was what before yeah. I? Um, it, it's only because I was just trying to remember yeah. the teams that were that were in it. But like in terms of like the top teams that I know that can win it, being Juve, um, Arsenal, and United, and Yo. Roma, I, I would put Roma only because of Jose Mourinho, only because of Jose Mourinho. You're gonna hate this take, but. How about the team that won your group? They're fucking bitchy. Real Sociedad. Oh, oh, oh Real Sociedad. No, no, I forgot that they're, they're bitchy too. They are a bitchy team. Like yeah. they only talk 
their group due to like a Fugazi penalty, but sure. whatever. But like they're third, they're third in La Liga. Uh, they play really good football. Um, you can even kind of say like Real Sociedad is kind of bringing back the traditional number ten, like the way how they have um, uh, what's his name, uh, Silva, Silva in the number ten over there. Like it is. I mean, yo, they're they're a really good team. That so it's a good thing that you reminded me of that. So I, I would say twenty five percent because I think no, 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 not twenty twenty percent. I should say wow. because I believe I believe that it is between five teams, right? It is between five teams: Roma, uh, Real Sociedad, Juve, Arsenal, and us. I go a little bit different. So I think I think Europa is actually your best shot. I think sure Juve is going to look a little bit scarier. Didn't Juve draw Arsenal or no? Or Sporting drew Arsenal. I yeah. think it's really going to come down to draw. But a lot of the times with with tournaments like this, what's the what's your key factor into picking a winner? For me, it's form. For me, yeah. it's form. It's it's not like league league play is a little bit different. But I cannot think of a team in Europe that is in better form than Man U, and I can't think of a player that's more informed than Rashford. Right. So I think significantly higher odds there epl i'll give them like a five percent shot you need arsenal and city to piss down their leg and right like you you really need a lot to work it's like the blue yeah. jays yeah the blue jays yeah. are gonna to win the world series they need houston and the yankees to piss down their leg it's hard you know what i'm saying that's hard yeah. bro. that is hard like so when no. i look at when i look at the prem like we're not in the title race but i do hope that we do finish this season at least minimum third you know what I mean? But with two trophies or possibly three trophies. And FA, I want nothing, nothing but United City final. If that is feasible, crazy. everybody in the world deserves to see that. I think yeah. it's pretty well evenly matched. And I hope at the same time, just for evenly, like even sake, I hope City and United are both in Champions League in Europa. So their schedules are both busy. I, I don't want one team to sort of be eliminated and zoning in on that game only you know what i mean yeah but you know what i don't find that too much of a problem because we've been going through that the whole season like sure, we've sure. been in every competition right and whenever we've come to a big game our opponents have had at least a week off sure right like when we went uh to the emirates to face arsenal arsenal had a week off right because they were already eliminated out of um, uh, Carabao Cup and 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 the FA Cup, I believe. Right, they were already eliminated out of two competitions. Um, and then uh, this, I believe, the same thing with City too. But then we beat City. Like uh, the same thing with Newcastle. We ended up being Newcastle. Like th this has just been our season. So if it gets to that point and City are not in the Champions League final, in which I hope that they're not. I don't care, bro. Like, I feel like we'll still beat them. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know there's nothing more you'd prefer than for fucking them to claim <laughs> out. I know that. Um, okay, so I will say out of everything that I've said on this pod, I've been as of now, as of March 3rd, I've been wrong. They are so far ahead of schedule, so far ahead of schedule, man. You that congrats and enjoy it and when they if if this does not pan out i can't hate it feels like he's pushed all the right buttons he's pushed all the right buttons and it's it's nuts it's yeah really nuts. so congrats imagine, on that. imagine with actual like like smart backing from a new owner like in terms of smart backing like i'm saying like an owner who will put the right guys in place above him to do this to do the smart thing not the money just not the splashing money thing you know what i mean like if sure. like if there's a player that seems like a really good fit in his system right and then like that player's a very good player but they're not there just yet and yeah. then there's like a world class player hopefully you know maybe they look at the other player before um trying to just splash money on that world class player and then overspending. So you know what so I mean? Is, is there a world, is there a world where Man United doing all this under the Glazers that they want to stay in and stay owning the team? 
Is, is yeah. that oh, fine. There's, there's no world because you know what? If they somehow get some sort of uh investing from like an, an external um company, uh and and they see Ten Hag doing what Ten Hag's doing, there's a chance that they're gonna wanna stay. Unless, you know, the Qataris or whoever we got ourselves or... wait, sorry, you were at Qataris, but we have a terrorist joining, FYI. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, wait. Dude. Oh man, no, not this guy. No, 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 no. no. I want to pan out, out him to him out. fucking outside here. It's so nasty here. How are you, Richard? Benfica. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Thank you very much for jumping on. You look like little Richard. You look blind. Um, you, were saying, you, you were saying the Qataris. Yeah, the Qataris. Or, or whoever um, else is making a bid for uh man united like i just hope that you know they put like a super good offer on it like uh, i'm hoping for the uh the the guys who are from qatar like sure uh, yeah to to uh own the team because i know like you know they they their money's long money like their money's <laughs> real money you know what i Fuck mean that. and like yeah, yeah. yeah like we could use some serious investment in, in the club in terms of the the infrastructure, right? Like new training grounds and and maybe a brand new stadium and um, you know, like fixing Old Trafford right now in terms of the leaks and all that wild shit and you know, putting the money into the right places. Like that's the hope, right? Uh, so I hope that, you know, the guy who wants to purchase it says, you know what, fuck it, man. Just here, five billion or five point five, take the money. All in cash. Let me. <laughs> all know, in let me, cash. Let me get this fucking team. You know, like, yo, the guy. The, 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 guys ma- are- the way you and I think rich guys roll is actually so amusing. Guy rolls around in like billion dollars in cash in the car. But yeah, no, I, I hear you. You want, you want just the. You don't even need bajillions and bajillions. You just want someone that's going to properly back and not want to be part of the decision making. Put good people in charge of the decision making. Exactly. That's like where- someone that understands that, uh, uh, you know, football is different, right? It is different than running like a normal business where you're looking for um, uh, a profit and shit like that, and and try and take out. The- it's not the same. Like, yeah. What. Uh, like uh, I guess I'm speaking from a fan point of view, but it is about glory. It's about trying to win trophies. Every single time, you, you, like every single chance you have to win a trophy, you go for it. You know what I'm saying? Like every single season, you go into a season one to win. Not like you don't go into the season and say, "Oh, let's see at the end of the quarter. Oh, how how many millions did the club make, and what can I take out of it?" Like. That's no, you're, you, listen, you're you're a million percent right. Where the, it's definitely a fan perspective. I'm not insulting you because guess what? I'm a fan, and there are sports that really, really struggle with this. That really struggle with making making winning a priority. Like, listen, they're not going to fucking invest and lose money. That's that's the key, right? As long as a billionaire is not losing money, you shouldn't be mad. Yeah, it's just greed involved in it, right? And that's that's where. You and I will never really understand it. We're not, uh, you know what? I, I hope one day we understand it because that means we're billionaires. But... Yeah, that means we're billionaires. Yeah. Dog. <laughs> but I, I just know we probably won't. And I just think to own a team like that, you can't expect to be making the same type of profits because I feel like to own a team, you're looking for trophies. That's part of yeah. why you to own a fucking team is success, right? Yeah. And that's why the best owners in the world are hands off but their dollars are there, right? The Cowboys never win. Their owner's a fucking bozo. Hands-on. He's right? so hands-on. Yeah. And, like, he's always fucking, you know, standing there after a game and, and giving his press conference. Like, bro, you're the owner. Shut the fuck up. Go upstairs. Exactly. Like, that's your job. Your job is to be fucking sitting on your chair. You know what I'm saying? You know what it is, too, actually? I'll even go a step further. Their job is to write checks. Just like your that's boss it. at work and my boss at work. Their boss's boss is just writing checks. That's all it is. Fucking collect the money, write checks, so you don't need to be front-facing. I never see yeah. my director. I never see my director. But if I do, I know I'm in shit. But it's not like every day my director's like, 
Jay, how is, how are things going? It's like, no, you fucking you let people manage it, right? Um, exactly. So that was our Man United update. And I will say, Stumpers, if you don't like the Man U content, then just cheer against them because they are involved in way too many tournaments and events that this podcast gives a fuck about. That's that's the problem. So if Man U starts to struggle, we talk less about Man U. When they start to dominate, they dominate the pod. That's the reality of it. Not that anyone's complained, but if you don't like it, start cheering against them. Um, and also, if you cheer against them, Rick and I rip into Perry. Very, very good. Um, and they still win. Yeah. Hey, you did tell us. You did tell us. Enjoy it while it lasts because life comes fast and it came really <laughs> fast. <laughs> you did tell us that. We've been doing this pod for almost two years now, year and a half. Yeah, yeah, almost two years now. You almost warned us. Years. Like, it's going to come. And when it comes, be ready. And I, I done cannot done. say I was ready. I was very I'm ready. prepared. I'm, listen, if we win the league, especially this year, if something were to happen and, like, we won the league this year, oh, man, I'd be the most unbearable human being you ever met. I'd be fine <laughs> if they won it this year more than next year because this year just means we more got to talk about the collapses by other teams. Yeah, which would That's- be sick. Which yeah, <laughs> like there, there's some real collapse talk. Um, so obviously, man, you didn't play this weekend in the EPL as they had other fish to fry, so to speak. Yeah. So Everton lost two nil to Aston Villa. A Villa, I'm gonna be honest. We're at that same stage as we were at last year. Everton more has matches circled on their calendar, so to speak. Villa would have been nice. It would have been a good one. Uh, I do think Villa is significantly better. So I'm going to name their matches, Perry, that are actually, that I think get them in. They're going to have to get points off Nottingham. Yeah. They they would be good to find some points against one of the four teams coming up. Brentford, Chelsea, Tottenham, United. Um, Which is going to be difficult, but to find points there. But those are not the primary ones. The important ones for us, they have Leicester way down the road. They have Wolves way down the road, and they have Bournemouth. Oh, man. I'm looking, and I'm like, fuck, man. That's There are not a lot of soft spots on this schedule. This nope. is this is looking real rough. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm I not sure how this fucking shakes out, and I don't. I, I, I'm not sure. Either way, that's where we're at. Uh, you make your bed, you fucking sleep in it. I, yeah, I got nothing really positive to bring up from this other than. It's tough, bro. I'm looking at the schedule right now for you guys. And you know, funny, I even looked at it. I looked at it yesterday for some reason. I was like, oh, let me see uh, Everton's schedule. And and once I started naming off Brentford, Chelsea, yeah. uh, Tottenham, United, Fulham, Crystal Palace. Where do you Cap- find points? I don't know, bro. This, this this Saturday, I think it's Saturday, against Nottingham is like a must result. Must get a result. Like a win, obviously, is gold, but anything because that stretch is just torturous. It's torturous. And Sean Dykes was put in such a bad spot. I can't I can't emphasize that enough. Just fucking. It's not fair on him. I, I will tell you that much. It's not fair on him um, because, you know what, like, He's coming into a terrible situation and also no investment as well. Yeah. Like when he came in in January, you would have, it was in January he came in, right? Yep. Uh, you know, you, you would think that they would try and get like a player or two for the, for, for the manager, like it, to, to try and get out of this position that you guys are in. Um, and, and I think the lack of investment and, and um, the lack of, I guess, you know, accountability has you guys in this position. I, I wouldn't blame uh Lampard uh too much as well. Like even though I hate Lampard, but like no investment from yeah. from from the beginning of the season up to now. Like you guys bought what like a 20 year old kid from us and and who else like they sold they sold Aaron Gordon and didn't really use anything from that sale. So it's like no. Okay. Like, I mean, what, what, the sell, what are they selling for? Like 60 mil or something like that? Or for, no, 40 or 60, something like that, right? I feel, I feel like it was closer to 40. But either way, whatever you got from that, like that is like gravy. So, so fucking spread the gravy. But no, that's just not the – not their no, way. And, home, yeah, they're, they're playing They're playing fucking – they're playing with the big boys. And this this might be the best thing. This might be. The, then start from scratch, right? Break it down and start it back up. Yeah. Uh, 
maybe may, maybe get your market value so low that some Saudi prince wants to buy it and <laughs> you go from there, right? I, I don't know. That's where we're at. That's where we're at mentally as fans. It's yeah. like, what the fuck can we build off? Not yeah. nothing on the field, right? It's um, tough, bro. It, it's tough. it's actually really, really tough, man. I was looking at everything. I mean, where you can most likely get points is Chelsea. I, I feel like you can get points at Chelsea because they are just a fucking disaster. Forest, um, Forest, you have to find points. Forest, Forest, you can get points at Forest. Yes, you can. Um, you can get points at and then, then you, and Bournemouth. Th- then you have to wait till fucking May. And that's when you play fucking Leicester and, you know, hopefully catch them off guard. And like, it's just so far down the road that, you know, these things change. They change from, from time to time. And, you know, last year I thought we were as good as dead. We found a way. I just don't see it this year, unfortunately, but uh, we, we persevere, right? We push through and we figure it out. Uh, moving forward. West Ham got their results. Very important. Arsenal got, uh, sorry, West Ham beat Nottingham 4 0. So it'd be nice if Everton can do something similar. Uh, Arsenal beat Leicester 1 0. Really unimpressive. There were moments there. Leicester looked like a fucking championship or League One type team. It was fucking pathetic. It was actually yeah. pathetic for portions of that match. I had a draw there. That's why I was like a little bit more disappointed than most. I, I actually thought Leicester could do something. And. Liverpool drew Crystal Palace and again one of the most boring matches I've laid eyes on. Uh that was on the Saturday. On the Sunday, did you watch any Tottenham Chelsea play? Yeah, I did watch. I did How's watch. That? Uh shit. Yeah, you said they're, <laughs> they're killing Joao Felix, you said, yeah? Yeah, in my opinion, I feel like they are just they're like he, he he chose the wrong club, in my opinion, man. Like, although yes, they're playing him in the ten, in which I feel like it's one. Of, like he can play in so many positions and do well in all those positions, that he does look like he's way ahead of everyone else in the team, but he's still looking shit. And that's how bad Chelsea look as a team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and. Like, I don't know, man. He he chose the wrong he chose the wrong club, if if you ask me. But uh them as a whole when watching that game, you know, Chelsea gave you nothing because also I think that they lost uh Tiago Silva in, in that game as well. Oof. Um yeah, man. I think he's out for a while. I think so um yeah, they Chelsea gave nothing and they have nothing like Yo, they they don't even look like they even want to be there, you know. When watching that, when watching that game, so um, Tottenham, they're going up. Yeah, I, if you can, if you can see like the past fucking, I don't know, man. Now they're like four points behind us when they were like ten that, or eleven. Is that, not, is that not a victim of ske- or not a victim? Is that not also built on schedule and who they've played lately? Like they haven't looked great. They've just been yeah, getting results been against them, yeah. me- mediocre teams, right? Yeah, but you got to beat them though. You know what I mean? And they're getting results, right? But they're (laughs) they're also having like very humiliating like defeats as well too. Like just like uh, two days ago, Sheffield. When they lost, yeah, Sheffield. Like what the fuck, Sheffield? uh, (laughs) Well, Sheffield United, right? Like yeah, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of people know Sheffield Wednesday. Like we we know Sheffield Wednesday, but like Sheffield United, I don't know where the fuck. What the hell? (laughs) Uh, Sheffield United, fun fact, is going to be promoted. They're like pretty much locked into promotion, and they beat an inform in some eye, some people's eyes. Tottenham, you're right. Tottenham's moving up tables. Uh, yeah, I I don't know what to make of Tottenham. I I've actually began my boycott of Chelsea football. They don't deserve my uh, my viewing pleasure. That's why I didn't watch that at all. Um, oh, my dog just made an insane noise. Uh. <laughs> The last thing before we move on to our, you know, predictions and stuff is Bayern Munich sort of played some big boy soccer over the weekend and they have officially rounded into form. They won, I believe it was 3-0 against Berlin who are chasing them down. And tell me, we did not see that coming. As soon as that team is threatened at all in Germany, at all, 
this is what they do, no? Yeah, but like, take a look at the table right now. It's tight. And Dort- Dortmund's on top now. Yep, it's tight. Dort- but the, yeah. the the point is, is Bayern is going to face Dortmund down the road, and they're just going to smack him up. But I think you make a valid point is the table's tight because these teams are not tripping up like they do you normally, right? Like Dortmund didn't trip up to Leipzig today. Yeah. They this, season, this season has been a little, it, it has been a little different. Like this is not the sort of season that we're all used to when no. talking to uh, Germany, you know I what I mean? General, I think in general, it's like a world cup thing, right? It's the world cup effect. It, it's a weird fucking season. Like Arsenal being number one, like yeah. no next season, they're probably going to fall to eighth, like, cause they're that shit. But look at them. They're number one this year. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, this, <laughs> this year has been weird. Like, Barcelona, uh, last season when watching them, you wouldn't think that they would be challenging for first. Like, even though it is Barcelona, you know what I mean? True. Like, I still thought that Real Madrid would be in first this upcoming season. I mean, this season that we're in right now. But look at that. They're, like, 11 points behind. It, it's a very weird year. And, like, Juve... All this shit, like it's fucked up. It's all backwards. I agree. Um, we shall move on. And as we go through our predictions for this week, Perry, it is leg two. So I always prefer leg two. Leg two, there's a little bit more gamesmanship for Champions League. So as we obviously make those predictions, if you do have any results that we have to decide who moves forward, please have them. I know Tiago provided a few picks, and we have no fucking clue. It, who he believes moves on. So we're going to guess for him. Um, and listen, this is a little bit fucked up. We were supposed to record this yesterday. I have it on file. We predicted Leipzig Dortmund today, right, Barry? We predicted it yesterday or the day before. So yeah. Ricardo chose, Ricardo predicted 2 2. Thiago predicted 2 1 Leipzig. Oh, yeah. You predicted 1 1 mm-hmm. draw. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're doing. I, I no, 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 no. Listen, part of this too. This is my problem. I don't want it to seem like I'm cheating. I'm not <laughs> cheating. <laughs> it's fucked up. I had two one Dortmund. Uh, uh, listen, Perry. I'm like LeBron. I, I, you know how you said you're LeBron. What was it, LeBron game six? 20, uh, I, yeah, 2011 LeBron. You know, <laughs> this, is, this is silly. I'm like Steph in that like 62 year, the game where they yeah. fucked the season. They won too many games. Um. <laughs> Another game that just wrapped up that we predicted that I luckily did not have correct or else I look like a cheater. Lazio and Napoli. Uh, Ricardo predicted 4-1 Napoli. Thiago predicted 2-1 Napoli. You went 3-0 Napoli. I went 2-0 Napoli. Lazio won. You know what we didn't take? Lazio won? Lazio won 1-0. You know what we didn't take into account here, Perry? Napoli has the season wrapped up. They're They have nothing to play for in fucking in Serie A. If you look at the table... They're so far ahead, especially with Juve fucking getting that silly uh, point deduction. So it's it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, why, why the fuck did we think a team? Look, I'm looking at the table right now. They're 17 points clear of Lazio. <laughs> Who's second? Crazy. Right? Yo, let me ask you. Let me ask you. Do you think Juve could do the unthinkable and get into Champions League? <laughs> so it's a great question. That's such a good – remember I was fucking around with this earlier. Yeah. Uh, so they're at – so to, for perspective stumpers, they are at 35 points, 24 games through. They're sitting seventh. That The closest Champions League spot is 12 points in front of them, and it's AC Milan. So I think that would be insane. But right? I think they're going to catch Atalanta. I really do. I really think this is going to be like a sense of pride. And what, what is that – that's Europa Conference League. Yeah, I, I think they catch Atalanta. And, yo, let's look at who they play. Do they play these teams in front of them? Because if so, then we're fucking oh, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. with oil. Like, if they if they get a Roma-Atalanta combo, they get Roma coming up. Saturday. Yeah, they get Roma on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, they get Roma. They get uh, Roma on Sunday. Inter. Inter on the in front of them. Oh, yeah. Do you see? There's a little bit of a hitch here, though. So... In between all this, they, they're in three comps. They have Europa, Serie A, and Coppa Italia against Inter. So that uh, there's a lot going on. They get Napoli, Lazio, 
Oh, fuck yeah. They get AC Milan and Atlanta. Yeah, I'm going to say, very bold, bold take. Yes. Especially with Pogba finally back. Yes. Oh, I think they catch man. AC. Listen. You? The fucking GOAT is back. The GOAT is back, man. Pogba <laughs> is fucking back. You think they can do it? With him, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Such a tactic. You know? <laughs> no, listen. Um, I think I think um yo, I think they can if they don't if they don't win Europa this season, I think they can make it into a position where they're playing in Europa next season. So I'm saying that I think they can go past Roma. They uh, they can they can take Roma out and at least finish fifth. Okay, fair. Finish fifth. Yeah. Okay, Europa. Europa's your your angle. Okay, I probably should have went there too, to be honest. But I just I'm excited that they're even in the hunt because bro, that point deduction was silly. That that point deduction was nuts. Okay, so add add what like add the fifteen points back. Oh fuck! Was it, yeah, it was fifteen. Yeah, so they would be in second right now, right? But like. Like sit comfortably in second, like they they would be a game a game in hand in front of Lazio, like yeah they would be in front of Lazio, but at the same time, it's see now this is the part that uh, becomes an issue because say they didn't have those thirteen points deducted, um, maybe they would have won you know uh, the other games that they tied or lost right after the uh, points deduction announcement happened. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't, it, gets, know, it gets tricky. Yeah. It, it gets tricky, but I think that, um, they probably would have ended off at second by the end of the season. And that, that would have been perfectly fine in a year where you lose your, your star midfielder for pretty much the entire calendar year to just get back to champions league next year, that would have been ideal. But you remember last year when all those guys stepped down from the board and you and I were like fucking super weird. That that's what this was from. This, yeah. this was always coming down the barrel. And that's why they didn't let go of uh, Allegri because he knew what was coming. Apparently the entire organization felt it coming and they just stood in front of the fucking bullets and they're like, let's do yeah. this. And they just took it. They just yeah. took it and said, you know what? We just go with it. Like, I mean, what, what can you do? Right. Like, um, yeah, yo, the people upstairs were all fucking cheating. You know? <laughs> That's pretty much what it comes down to. Yeah, just you got to just take it and take it on the fucking shin. And it's a throwaway season, unfortunately, right? Um, on to matches that have not taken place. And it's actually a pretty good, uh, a pretty good schedule in the EPL. There's two matches this weekend. So, first one we're going to predict is Newcastle and Man City. So, Man City is a little bit of Jekyll and Hyde. Newcastle is definitely on the down. They have six points in their last five matches in the EPL. Not pretty. Not pretty at all. Uh, this match is in the Emirates. Give it to me, Perry. What do you see here? I I see like a 4 nothing. Like, down. Yeah, because you know what? I think that with, um, you know, City not playing that well and Pep like feeling ways about shit, like I think that they're bound to like, rip a team apart sooner or later Same. you know what i mean yeah. yeah and like newcastle they're coming down from losing so uh it, it could be like a perfect storm you know what i mean like they're down mentally and and all of that they they probably feel even more tired now because they lost right so um i see them getting slapped up fair Fair. I, I, I have a bit of a different spin. So first I'll give you the boys' picks. Uh, Ricardo went 2-0 City. Tiago went 3-1 City. Um, I also went 2-0 City. But what I, what I was thinking here, Perry, is with them playing either Tuesday or Wednesday next week, I don't know how long they're keeping in, like, a De Bruyne and such with Leipzig. Like, it'd be different if they handled Leipzig in Germany. I would, I would think they would... Uh, they would fucking smack around Newcastle, especially because Newcastle, like you said, has no bite. But correct me if I'm wrong. Leipzig drew one one, right? With yeah. City, so City's yeah. got to get a result. Yeah, yep. And oh, so man. does Leipzig, right? Because yeah. Leipzig is in it to win it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
Um, and and that's why, yeah, like we, yeah, we'll we'll get there. <laughs> well, man, I, I I'll be honest. I I, I have a two nothing here, City, but I think it might even be closer than that. I think it. Like Newcastle doesn't bring anything to the table. It's not going to be a very watchable match. But why I put it down on our predictions list is it is the second and fourth place or fifth place team. So it's yeah. it's a race. It's a race one, right? Um, okay. On to the nitty gritty. We got Manchester United going into Anfield uh, on Sunday. Must see TV. Klopp was going on and on and on in his press conference today. He sounded like a little bit of a bitch. He is uh, such a bitch, man. He sounded, he, <laughs> he sounded like a little bit of a bitch. He said, but you know what? He gave he gave Ten Hag the biggest compliment. He's like, yeah, he turned it around very fast. I don't know what people want me to say about him, but it's like, dog, just shut the fuck up. Yeah, all he has to say is that. Yeah, all he has to say is that, and not all the other wild shit he said afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, he, yo, this guy, he is <laughs> he is smoking something strong. He sounded fucked up. Him. He's fucked. He sounded really fucked up. Um. So I, I'm going to be honest. I, I heard that today and I'm like, this guy's on one and I just don't really appreciate it. I'm off this. Bro, roller coaster. he's feeling the pressure. He's feeling the pressure so. of, of uh, them having a shit season. And then he's looking at us, right? Like coming in in form like we are like, he's kind of showing that he's scared. But, you know, the thing is like, even though we're on form and I know how our team is and like, the mentality that they have and shit, I'm fucking scared too because this is this game. No matter what, is always one of those fucking games always that like, matters. And yeah, it always matters. Doesn't matter where either team are on the tape, like in the table. Um, like yo, we've gone into Anfield with like Ronaldo and fucking Rooney, Tevez, all these mans, and still left with a loss. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we, we went in there with better teams, and they've had shittier teams than what they have right now. It's a rivalry, right? Like, this is this yeah. is not a derby, but this is, like, a rivalry. This is one where both teams get up for it, and, like, their their crowd's extremely hostile, right? Extremely. Like, they're you know, in a fucked up way, Man United are more rivals to Liverpool than Everton are. Yeah, it, it it's the biggest match in England, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it has always been that match where it's always been advertised no matter what. Like, United versus Liverpool. Like, that is the game. And even, you know, as a United fan, like, I fucking hate Liverpool, like, with a passion, right? Yeah. I get at, like, Arsenal more because, like, I think their fans are dumb. So that's why I get at them more. But, you know, <laughs> I, I fucking hate Liverpool and, and I always want to beat them. Like last season, yo, they whooped our asses nine nothing in, in 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 a split of the home and away. Like crazy. They did. They smacked you guys want, right the fuck up. Bro, I want fucking revenge this time around. Like I want them to shut like the um that whole stadium down. Like <laughs> that was probably the lowest of lows I've heard you. I, there was a city loss last year as well, I think. That was really yeah, nasty. That too. Yeah, but I feel like the Liverpool one. See, that's another thing. It's like City are your right or your is your derby. But I don't know. I think Liverpool is your bigger rival. Like no, just, it is. Yeah. It is. It a hundred percent is. Like, see, here's the thing, right? You will never hear a United fan say that, oh, I would rather want Liverpool to win a title over, like, you know, a next, uh, like, over Man City. We, But you would hear United fans say that we prefer City wins the title over Liverpool or prefer yeah, City wins yeah. the title over Arsenal. You know why? Because to us, they're still a small fucking club that will never yeah, they're, reach they're, they're not relevant. our level. Yeah, they will never reach our level. But Liverpool are there because oh, both yeah. history, you know, the history of the club. Like, I think we finally just went past them in terms of um, uh, trophies, trophies amount from this win, right? We were ahead of them, but then they started to win some trophies recently and, and they tied us. And I think now we went ahead of them. I didn't realize it was that close. Yeah, it, it's been that close, man. Like, I fucking hate Liverpool. Like, I always look forward to this game like but you're nervous um, but nervous as fuck 
like yeah. nervous because you know you know how it is in Anfield like it, it gets crazy in there whenever it's a big game like they actually have some sort of atmosphere when it's a big game you know but most of the time it's like some fake atmosphere that they like to brag about like it's fucking it, shit they're it's hostile with their stupid oh you never walk alone like fuck them they're Bro. hostile man that yeah. is one thing about them it is a hostile crowd that is like the definition of that squad to me. Uh, sorry, of, of that fan fan base. What did the boys say? Rick went 2-1 Liverpool. Thiago went 2-1 Man U. I have 2-1 Liverpool. I think there might be some uh, fuckery, some officiating fuckery. And oh, red. the only way they can, they can beat us, bro. Because yeah. they're, not, they're not better than us as a team. No, but <laughs> oh, I, I totally agree. The 2023 outfits of both clubs, it's... Honestly, it's not close. It's not close. Yeah, it's, it's really not that. They're, they're I, I'm going to say they're they're forward. They're attacking three are better as a whole, but roster for roster, roster to roster, I don't think it's very close. Yeah, right. they're top heavy. They're top yeah, they heavy. Are. How do you get the yeah. ball there? Right. It's it's a little bit of the PSG issue. It's a little bit of that yeah. service. Um. Yeah. So yeah. I went two one here. Like I said, fuckery, and you have a ooh. I got one nothing United win. Yeah. Smash and grab, yo. Just <laughs> one of those who are like, you know, okay. we we go there, we're solid defensively, you know, <laughs> like you let them have possession all they want and shit. And people are like, oh, look at Liverpool. They have 60% possession. Oh my God. And then we just bang Rashford out. Yeah. Steal it. <laughs> yeah, steal it and cut, yo. Fuck this shit. That's incredible. That's such a good analogy. That's such a good, it's a smash and grab job. In, out. In, out. Yeah, you know, just one of those. Like, take a big old fucking chair and smash the window, get in there, out. That's it. Yeah, it, 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 you know what? Fucked up is they're playing spoiler, which is, like, so weird to say out loud, right? It's so fucking weird because for years, they've been they've been the hunted. Now they're, like, the hunter, just yeah. a role reversal, and it's still just as important, right? Should be a really good one. Um, we move on to Champions League. So I'm a bit of a bozo. Yeah, no, no, I actually did it right. These are this is the Tuesday and Wednesday fixers. I, I thought I did all eight. I'm like, what the fuck did I do? Uh, so I'm gonna say the aggregate score of each before we jump into each matchup. You know, I've been doing this pod long enough. I feel like people should be aware that I do give a fuck about aggregate and there's a gambling component to this. So I do take breakdowns importantly here, or I take them seriously. Benfica and Club Bruges. Benfica is up 2-0 on aggregate, and they're going home. Uh, for those that aren't aware, there is no more carrying of away goals. There's no more weight to one versus the other, as we've discussed at length on this pod. Um, Benfica is in form for the most part. They are currently playing in their league today, so they will have some rest. Uh, what do you see happening here, my guy? Uh, unfortunately, I feel like someone may have hacked my predictions. I'm not sure, but I, I got a, I got a three nothing Benfica win here. Stumper is a little bit behind the curtain. Le- LeBron James, 2011, he goes off ape shit. Perry takes me being first place as this is his moment. So he is no longer. <laughs> throwing nine nothing club Bruges predictions out which he normally would be doing here and i respect the shit out of it the sad part is tiago and rick's combined cannot catch our numbers it's a two-horse race We're like two <laughs> stallions and the boys are just behind um three nothing mafika eh? so i think it's very important here is i i actually want this to be an interesting tie so i hope club Bruges scores early because i feel like if mafika does the onslaught comes very fast and They'll be able to get their guys some rest. And they play in such a shit league. It's my dad's team. But you know what? I like them to be tested here. Club Bruges was a bit of a buy of a draw anyway, right? That's... Yeah, such an easy draw, man. And then we have Luso in the chat always talking like, uh, <laughs> fucking you know, he could something, yo. I got to I gotta give him credit. That's the only thing I give him credit for. Them winning their group got them this. And it's like, oh, who the fuck was in their group? It's like, not you wouldn't say that, but uneducated people. And it's like, PSG. So it's it's good they got that. It's awesome. But on the yeah. other hand, it's like, could it have gotten any easier? Like, yeah. they could have gotten fucking Dortmund. 
Like they, there's a lot, a lot of tougher draws here. Uh, Ricardo has a three one Benfica. I have a two one Benfica. Tiago just copied me. He has a two one Benfica. I think like we have a lot of the same scores. Not too. I think Tiago's just trying to ride the train to happiness here. I don't. I'm not very happy with that. On to a bigger one, Perry. And I know you didn't pick this with your heart, but it's an interesting one. Is Dorman at Chelsea? So Dorman going. To Stanford Bridge, Dorman had a nice result at home, 1-0. Probably should have been more for those that were paying attention. I think you watched the, the first leg of this as well. Yeah. Um, Chelsea is on a disgusting run, as we've discussed. Like, really, really bad. They have not scored a goal, Perry. And they have not scored a goal since February 11th. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's crazy. It's, it's like, it's almost comical, right? You think like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, February. We're, yeah. we're recording this March third. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Like, I I read something where it said Fred has <laughs> as many goals or more goals actually than Chelsea has in twenty twenty three. I don't know if it's twenty twenty three. I know it's for sure February. For sure. Yo, they only scored it's one goal in February. Dog. 2023, I swear they've only scored five goals in 2023. And Fred has more than that? Fred has like, Fred has like fucking, yeah, Fred has five or six. <laughs> and that's, that's so fucking good. That is so good. Um, How do you see this one shaking out? It's a little bit different than I do. Uh, And give me an impact player here to watch that's not Jude Bellingham or Joan Felix. Because... Th- we, I know you're a big Jude guy, as am I. Who's a guy to watch here? Um, uh, well, for this one here, because I, I didn't even, um, I didn't mention what my thing is gonna be. So, like, I think it's gonna be two nothing, two nothing. I think that fucking Dortmund, they're just gonna go in there and like, just they're just gonna play one heck of a game, and 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 I think that they're just gonna be too good for them. They're gonna be too quick for them. Um. They're going to be way too good on the ball for, for Chelsea. Uh, one of those teams that I think that Chelsea kind of struggles with, right? Teams that are obviously good on the ball uh, because they're not good off the ball, <laughs> nor are they good on the ball either. So, yeah, like, not good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, but I would say the one, the one person that I would look at would be maybe Sebastian Haller. Um, and that being like, I don't think Chelsea's, you know, central pairing is that good if they don't have Thiago Silva playing, right? Or it even, or, true, or true. their, or their back three, whatever they want to put as their, uh, defensive pairing at the back. I don't think they're as good or as stable in that position without Thiago Silva. So this might be one of those games where in which, you know, Sebastian Haller might, you know, score a goal or two because, you know, a lot of people has been talking about, um, uh, you know, his time in England and it wasn't that great when he was playing for uh, West Ham. Maybe he has something to prove. Who knows? You never know. And obviously what he had, he's, he's gone through, you know what I mean? This could be like, this could be one of those like per- perfect storms in my opinion. I'm going to say, fair enough, and I think that's that's cool. I, I thought you were going to say Adiemi, Emery Khan. I thought you were going to go with one of those names. Sebastian Haller has actually been a little bit disappointing since going to dormant, so that's actually a good watch to see if he figures it out. Yeah, you uh, never know, man. He could yeah. be feeling like, well, I need to prove something. like, And then, boom, he has the game of his life. So, I yeah, I think this is going to be the match of – the match of the week for Champions League. I think this is going to be a little bit back and forth. I have a 2-2 draw. I feel Chelsea leads this match for large portions of it. And Dortmund steal a draw late and go through. And Grand Potter is officially relieved of duties. If they do not advance here, he's relieved of duties. I do not know how he survives it. It's getting ugly. Ugly. Yeah. ugly. Like, but this is what I was telling you, bro. No. I'm like, listen, I won't be surprised if and this was way before they were doing as poorly as they are now. Like, because I kind of saw it early on, man. I was like, you know what? Like, I don't think it's a good match, these two here. And then now, like, the owner goes out there and spends, like, $300 million in January. Like, 
you know the owner is really expecting something, right? Like, Anytime. yeah, but it, it's kind of stupid too because I think they signed him to like a five year deal worth twelve million a year as a Ram? manager. Yeah, so you know for sure he's not gonna resign. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he wants that money. He ain't yeah. gonna resign. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. That's wild. Um, like you, you don't, you don't. Um, you don't sign managers to like five year deals, like you just don't do it. That's why now, like, the uh, common practice is this three year deal. Oh, just shorter term, yeah, three year deals. I'm gonna say you don't bring in your, your go to guy and then shake up his roster this quickly. This just feels very like you know, they are directionless, like I said last week, they're just very directionless and. I think Grant Potter is going to land on his feet. Maybe, maybe at Everton next year, and fucking the championship. Who knows? But it's just not Chelsea. It's it's not built for him. I don't think. Um, we a national team manager. Say it again. A national team manager. Wow, maybe there you go. England, I, maybe England or Wales. He'd be an upgrade for Everton. I'm sorry, I, I don't mind Sean Dyche, but I think he'd be a good a good upgrade oh, for yeah, us. I think that would suit him better, like a smaller team. Is what suits him. Like I'm not sure that from the get go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, like a team that's not a Chelsea, where like the expectations are totally different, totally different than where he came from in Brighton, and and like he's never managed such personalities, and and never been in a situation where all eyes were on him until now, and you've seen it's not looking great. Also, the way they do things is so differently, right? Like, they just throw money against the wall. Like, they're throwing, like, spaghetti and just hoping it sticks. It's like, yeah. Brighton, Brighton builds from within. Chelsea's a little bit more, like, lavish and spending, and it's not built for everybody. Um, uh, Wednesday should be should be a good day. Uh, we're going to lose one of the top teams. But you know what? We'll start with the other match because it's not as exciting, and I don't really care about it as much. AC Milan going to Tottenham. AC Milan got a very, very nice... Result a one nil against Tottenham, leg one, going to to England, very similar to the Chelsea thing where I do feel t- uh, AC Milan deserved better than just one nil. Perry, how do you see this bad boy shaping up? And I I can never get a read on you in Tottenham, so I'm gonna let you let you spew here. Nah, it's 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 weird, man. Like the thing about Tottenham is that they're Tottenham. You know what I mean? Like, yo, that club is, it, it epitomizes failure. That's what, <laughs> that's what Tottenham is. Like, they haven't won a trophy in like, I don't know how many decades, but it's been, it's been like two decades, three decades that they haven't won a trophy for, a uh, trophy in. And, but like, there are times when they go in and they put a performance when you least expect it. Right. When when you're expecting them to just fold like they always do, um, they bounce, they, just, they bounce back, yeah, they bounce back, they pull out something and you're just like, yo, what the fuck? Like, are are, are you serious right now? Is Tottenham actually here? And then next the next game comes and Tottenham fails. So I I'm feeling like Tottenham might do one of those Tottenham things and actually pull this one out to nothing like hey i want to know give me a goal scorer not named harry kane if somebody on tonham scores give me a goal scorer not named harry kane oh man putting you You on the spot they don't really have much but i would say hoiberg Ah. who hoiberg i thought i thought you were gonna say for carlson like grinding your teeth like just looking at your joint being like fuck I got to no, say his name. Man, uh-huh. You know what? That guy, he's just not going to score. He's not going to score anyway. Like, I just is. find it so funny yeah. that you you would say me before for Carlson. You'd be like, no, nah, Jay, I, I trust you. I think you're going to have a big moment. It's like, for Carlson, you're never saying that guy's name. Ever. No. Ever. I could guarantee that shit. He's um, fucking shit. I'm going to say, I'm going to be honest. I think you have me with your Tottenham take. And we made these picks beforehand. I have a 3-1 Tottenham. I, I can see Tottenham going on a Fugazi run here to like the quarters and semis with nice draws and this being the first leg of it, right? And seeing like a Benfica next round, being Benfica. And it's a little bit smoke and mirrors. No one believes that this team can actually win a Champions League. It was the biggest waste of $10 of my life betting on them to win Champions League. 
Um, <laughs> I, I know they're not going to. Uh, I will say this is also a play against AC Milan. I don't believe in AC Milan. I, I don't think it's, yeah, it's a very – yeah, that's that's so – where I guess it's more of a play against them, and three is probably being very ambitious. I don't know how Tottenham finds three goals the way Conte has them out there, but they do bounce back, and they are a little bit of a roller coaster of of a, of a, a unit where lo- losing to Sheffield probably get a result this weekend, win on on Wednesday, lose the following Saturday. It's sort of their yeah. their shtick, right? They're not yeah. they're, they're not totally informed. So yeah, I have three one Tottenham, and. I think it's pretty sound. I'm going to say Perisic finds a way, even though he's not a, a 90 minute guy anymore. Perisic. Also, very off topic. I'm on the Fubo, and Copa Libertadores is on, which I guess is the uh, is that like the like the South American Cup? Yeah, it's yeah, on. yeah. It's fucking packed. Like it's nuts, yo. Holy, and this is like not even good soccer. This is like. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy respect what minute is it in what minute is it in right now you're in one the it's the portman so fortaleza which i know is a brazilian team and it looks like i can't even pronounce the other team's name Mal, maladonado anyway it, this might be a replay because i was just watching the end of the france league one match uh nice oh, i won one and it just jumped into this and i'm like look at this crowd sorry very off topic i was just so taken back i'm like these people are going nuts for what? Like, fucking go to the hangar and watch soccer. It's the same shit. Uh, Ricardo has a 1-1 draw here, which means he believes AC Milan progresses. And Thiago has a 2-0 AC Milan. This is why these guys don't win, though. This is why they don't win and get correct predictions. They're so bad. Yeah. Like, neither one of these are happening. It's dumb. <laughs> anyway, fuck, I can't help it. Uh, okay, I will finish with the main course. PSG and Bayern Munich. PSG going to Germany for the second leg of, I'm going to say one of the most anticipated like round of 16s in a really long time. And so PSG are, I'm going to say middle favorites. Like Dortmund is a bigger, uh, sorry, PSG is an underdog. Dortmund is a bigger underdog going to Chelsea than PSG is going to Bayern Munich. If that sort of helps paint the picture, Perry, and what people think happens here. Gambling wise, yeah. um, Bayern Munich are fairly healthy. You know, all things considered, other than Mane, newer, they, they can put it together. And PSG is sort of going through the motions. Uh, and I think Neymar is injured, correct? Oh yeah, yeah, he's out. He's out. It's already confirmed. He's out. Okay. Before I give you my quick prediction oh. on here, because I feel like you know this shit better than I do. This matchup, I feel like you have a better read on. What is the Neymar take that people have? Is he gets hurt in around Carnival every year? Is that the take <laughs> no what the take is is that he always gets hurt around this time of the year so <laughs> he can go home and be and be with his sister on her birthday honestly such i i hate to say this but it's such a king move it's so gangster <laughs> it's so fucking gangster i cannot hate on it i can't Yo, I'm, not, I'm not gonna hate you know, on it you know it's funny though like because there's more to like the joke in itself because it's kind of messed up. People think that him and his sister, you know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yo, the, yo, people say some weird ass shit, bro. Like, but, uh, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. I, so, all kidding aside, I had no idea about any of this. And I made that joke in the chat. And then you sort of laughed and were like, people say this shit. And I'm like, oh, okay. That explains Neymar being weird. Um, <laughs> Neymar also slid into the DMs of two really attractive volleyball stars and said, I think they're sisters, and said both you guys at the same time to both of them in separate chats. It's just weird. Uh, Yo, he's wild, bro. You see? Yo, he's on that sh- He's on that sibling shit. Yeah, exactly where my brain goes. As soon as I said <laughs> that story out loud right now, I'm like, he's fucking totally into this incest shit. Um <laughs> I don't know how I, listen, I don't know how PSG go in there and beat them without Neymar. That is my theory. I don't know how, but I do feel this match is closer than my heart says. So I'm gonna pick with my brain and I have a two two draw and I think it's exciting. Uh, I don't think Messi goes out whimpering in a Champions League Pot- potentially his last Champions League, but most likely not. I say two two draw fun matchup. 
not but not the best matchup of this week. Yeah. I say? mean like if that two two draw happens, like I obviously see Mbappe scoring both goals because that guy like his mentality is like that's top tier, man. Like he's, that he's that nice. guy's a baller. Yeah, he he's a baller. So but I, I do see a two one Bayern. I see a two one Bayern because you know what? Like PSG looks like they're just being depleted, like one by one. Like that that news about Hakimi. Uh, up, well. eh? Yeah, Fucked it's been up. wild, man. That's beyond wild. Like for those that don't know, sorry, for those that don't know, Hakimi is being accused of raping a twenty three year old girl. Yeah. Don't know, it's really fucked up. So he's definitely not going to be playing games because you you can't be playing games like playing yeah. a guy who's been charged for this or you know like wild but, yeah yeah I forgot that. yeah so you know when you do these things like this what happens right but um but no in a sense of like yeah yeah you're right like, I, I, yeah. I'm only laughing at like my brain not thinking Hakimi's not playing this matchup. Like that—that that is significant. Uh, not not as significant as Neymar, but it's big. It's really big. It's big. Yeah, yeah, it's big because they don't have like another outlet like in that position. Like, yeah. you know what I mean, offensively. Um, but and and then I don't think their midfield is that strong, right, compared to Bayern's. Um, so that's why I'm. I see a two-one where like you know that kid Musiala, man, fucking. Killer. What a player that kid is, man. What a player. Like, I, I think he's going to score a goal. I think, you know, I, I have two points here. I have two. I, I will take him to, to score a goal as well. And Mbappe to score two feels like the safest if it's a 2-2 two, two game. Mbappe just looks possessed. Two things here, Perry. So first, in a weird way, Mane's injury maybe helped Musiala. In a weird way, they've had to lean on him more, and he's sort of shown he can carry the water. I yeah. think with Mane, they would maybe lean on Mane a little bit more, and we wouldn't we wouldn't really have the answers to Jamal yet. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I get that. So that's that's a weird one where I think you know addition by subtraction sometimes helps or subtraction by addition. Another thing, both of us cannot find a route in which PSG can win this match, but both of us have PSG sniffing around in this match. Yeah. So what does that tell you? Is and listen. I'm not big on rigging and stuff like that. I just feel officiating can be a real impact here, keeping PSG in this, because this will be the most watched matchup of the four, undoubtedly, right? Undoubtedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. most likely, yeah. yeah. Like, because uh, Manchester's not playing this week, I don't think, in the Europa. Because yeah. Manchester, Barcelona was the most watched match last week, and it was for the yeah. second biggest European trophy. It's fucking comedy how <laughs> crazy that is. You know, it was crazy, because, like, PSG only had, like, I think it was like 40 million viewers or something yeah. like that. And then the, um, the United Barcelona game had like, I think 80s, 80 something million, like, like 80 to a hundred, like million viewers yeah. or something like that, just for our fucking Europa League to give, game. To give perspective though, for those that are ignorant enough to think it's all United or all Barcelona, like those are just two of the three biggest clubs in the world. And that's exactly. the fucking truth of it. Like exactly. the PSG and Bayern can be huge and there's real money there. Real Liverpool had more of a chance at keeping up because of the names, right? It's the names on the front of the jerseys. That's why people watch this shit, especially when they are fucking lack of a better word. It's like a cult following Barcelona, yeah. Real Madrid, and Man U are all cults. It's crazy. Yeah. It it's is true. It's, it's, built it's, into, it's, true. it's built into like the cultures of these places. Um, it's, it's a fucking religion, man. It is. That's what it is, yo. Uh, so yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Is both of like I, I think I'm gonna bet the draw here. I think we both understand this game will be close, even though PSG will be undermanned. Um, Ricardo went three two Bayern, so he has Bayern advancing. And now my most annoyed pick of all time, Thiago said two one PSG. He submitted these picks on Tuesday. It is Friday today. Who the fuck does he have advancing? How the fuck do you do that and not tell me? <laughs> this team advances. It's literally like he plays meant, and since then we've gone into one WhatsApp war with him over Pele, and I still can't get a fucking answer out of him. And I'm like, it, it's comedy. So you know what? I'm leaving it up to you, Perry. Who do you think Tiago has advancing? Because we got to get into the mind of of his. Oh man, let's see. 
Uh, how many Brazilians are? In <laughs> <laughs> that is the only yeah, way. Yeah. At least we think the same. Yeah. That's the only way we can pick for him. So, I think so PSG he, won that. Yeah, I, I think I think he's saying PSG because like Marquinhos probably scores right. a goal. Right. Uh, Neymar comes back from injury and scores a goal. Is what he's gonna say. You know, like yep. Who the fuck knows? But I think uh, we'll just choose PSG for him. Yeah, I, I feel like it's a safe one. PSG is. Probably were, and he's also a messy guy, right? So yeah, PSG is uh, is going through apparently, but they're winning two one. Um, before I let you go for the day, Perry, what match are you most looking forward to watching of the four Champions League ones? Of the four Champions Leagues, uh, uh, Benfica, Bruges, uh, Chelsea, Dortmund, PSG, Bayern, and fuck my brain, AC Milan and Tottenham. Yeah, obviously the Bayern one. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. strangely am more excited to watch Dortmund Chelsea because I feel like my feed will be blowing up, and all because of Chelsea. And I want to see the disaster firsthand. I really haven't watched a lot of Chelsea <laughs> other than the Dortmund one last week, so uh, that's the one I'm locked into. Um, yeah, especially because Benfica Bruges on the same day is not going to be happening for me. Yeah. Okay, my guy. I uh, I. Greatly appreciate you jumping on and telling me your Man United war stories. Stumpers, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, comment below. Any takes? If there are any Manchester City fans, please message me privately. Give me some ammo. If there are any Liverpool fans, I'm surprised you still listen to this. Uh, Fuck them. Yeah, exactly. Like, we are not Liverpool people. But listen, listeners are listeners. We love you guys anyway. And if you are an Everton fan, just drop me a heart. Drop me a heart. You're like, you know, things are going to get better. Uh, you need a hug, bro. I do need a hug. My dog's giving me kisses as I'm saying this. I need something. Um, <laughs> Stumpers, I hope you guys like this episode. Like, subscribe, comment. Perry, you're the guy. Thank you very much. Hope yeah. you have a good Friday night. Smoke that good shit. Oh, I already am. <laughs> Peace, my brother. <laughs>